Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Locke, and I'm about to give you the best presentation for the whole conference. So um, just let me work this thing. Oh, here we go. Right. So um, I'm the Managing Director of Pan-Asia Metals, and I represent a really, really great team of people. Um, but today I'll start with EV and whether it's real, because I was on the beach this morning without my jacket, but looked like a fool, and someone said, well, what's going to power them, etc., etc., etc. So I'll just run through it quickly. Uh, for lithium, by 2030, will be 4.6 times or nearly five times consumption of 2022 uh, uh, lithium or LCE. So it's a massive market. And on this chart, which I think is really interesting, and this is why it's starting to get uh, popular, at the top we've got an ice vehicle here, and 80% of the energy is lost. So only 20% of the energy gets through to uh, the, uh, the wheels. Uh, whereas a, an EV uh, below, it only has 33% losses of energy through uh, to the wheel before regeneration. And this is what consumers of EVs are starting to see. So even when we see these memes, a trainload of EV fuel on its way to somewhere, um, it could be true, but the reality is EVs are better at utilising the energy than ice vehicles. And the litmus test is this. This is a taxi. Uh, in Indonesia, Bluebird, this is not a Bluebird taxi, just signed up with BYD to purchase 500 EV taxis. So when an EV taxi can work in Indonesia, it can work just about anywhere. And even on the Gold Coast, I was in a Tesla EV and he said it was fantastic. So it's a real thing. So where will all the EVs be made? Well, I can't answer that right now. But right now, over 55% of cars are made in Asia. This is India, China and Southeast Asia. So it's highly likely that there's going to be a lot of EVs made here. Interestingly, this is where more than 90% of bikes are made, and in India and China and Southeast Asia, there's a plethora of electric bike brands coming out. It's, and they're real bikes, uh, so it's very interesting. And where are we? We're in Southeast Asia, so we have uh, two project initiatives. In Vietnam, we have a MOU with a group called VinES, a battery manufacturer, and that's to build a lithium conversion facility, which will use third-party product. And then in southern Thailand, we have our Rion Ket lithium project. It's a concentrate to CAM initiative, joint venture partner yet to be announced, but we think we're pretty close, where that partner, uh, likely a chemical company, will be uh, joining us to, to take our concentrate, produce lithium carbonate, and through to cathode active material. So these two projects actually embed us into the midstream lithium, lithium chemical supply chain, or the electrochemical supply chain. And this, who's, this is who is operating in Southeast Asia. All these names, there's pl plenty of names there, some are Indian, uh, but they're all building factories in Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia, and India. So this is an absolutely massive ecosystem. There's two billion people in this region, with China over three billion. Nearly half the world's GDP is generated here. Um, in Southeast Asia alone, we've got 640 million people, with a big chunk of these people moving into the middle class. So the VINES uh, joint venture is a joint venture to produce a lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide, yet to be determined. We're in our pre-feasibility. We've got RFQs out. We expect to produce a PFS in the coming uh, six to eight weeks. So we're very well progressed. And our partner, VINES, is already producing batteries for hand tools, uh, stationary storage, and its sister company, VINFAST, uh, for their EVs, which are being exported to the US. So there's a lot of experience in this group, a lot of joint ventures with local companies, uh, and so on. And then in Thailand, where we are, Thailand is the fourth largest auto producer in Asia and the largest in Southeast Asia, and the Thais want to retain that leadership position. So it's policy heavy on EVs, batteries, and they've in even introduced a mining policy for uh, the exploration and uh, uh, production of uh, critical minerals, which will feed into their industrial supply chain. If you see a Mercedes EQS EV on our roads in Australia, it was made in Thailand. Uh, BYD, Great Wall Motors are uh, already there, and Geely, and there are other small companies like Hoson, which no one would have heard of, but they're producing um, sort of mid-range, uh, low-price EVs. 
Right now, there's over 20 brands producing all sorts of vehicles in Thailand. Uh, there's, uh, uh, I think there's 14 uh, EV projects and 18 uh, battery projects. So the Rion Ket project in southern Thailand, it's 40 minutes out of Phuket. We get a lot of interest from people who want to come on a site tour. I'm pretty sure it's not to see the site. Um, but uh, there we're um, uh, well, well on our way to a pre-feasibility study for our southern prospect and a mineral resource for our northern prospect, which are 8 k's apart, to produce a concentrate there, uh, then produce lithium chemicals in one of the key industrial sectors, sex, uh, zones in Thailand, which would deliver uh, that into a cam factory for use in Thailand. Our Rion Ket project has um, two key prospects. The southern prospect, Rion Ket, is, has a resource right now of 10.4 million tonnes at 0.44% LI2O. Don't let the grade uh, scare you. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, and we've got an MRE upgrade coming pretty soon. And then to the north at Bangi Tum, uh, that's being drilled at the moment. We're on hole number 31. Uh, we just delivered a uh, drill-supported exploration target of 16 to 25 million tonnes at uh, a point, a point 0.4 uh, to 0.7% LI2O. If we hit the midpoint on the exploration target and say we produce 15 million tonnes at Rio Ket, that's a 35 million tonne resource and they're 8 k's apart, plenty of sealed roads. You can see lots of roads and wires here and a 240 megawatt uh, watt hydro power station on the grid. At Rion Ket, we drilled 102 diamond holes, uh, and in this cross section, um, of course, we produced our best cross section, but we've got a lot of uh, hits here at plus 1% LI2O and composite grades of up to nearly 70 metres, you know, averaging uh, in the mid fives to mid 6% 6 LI2O. And then at Bangi Tum, we're on hole 30 to 31, same sort of uh, mineralisation, a pegmatite dark swarm and uh, we expect to produce a MRE there later this year. For vo both projects, in fact, we expect to be lodging our mining licence applications at the end of this year or early next year, and we'll be delivering pre-feasibility study work. That's been, that's well progressed. Now on the grade, 0.44 doesn't sound that fantastic, but uh, when we do all sorting, we get rid of 60% of the rubbish. And um, in this case, we are uplifted to 0.92% LI2O. So for lapidolite, that's pretty competitive. Our test work is producing a 3% uh, Li2O concentrate. For lithium, that's about standard with a circa 80% recoveries. Further test work on sorted material should produce higher recoveries and higher grades. And then our work into, for lithium into solution has been incredibly uh, successful. Now on lapidolite and where it stands on the cost curve, this is a Wood Mackenzie cost curve and the blue bars are spodumene, the green bars are lapidolite, and you can see four Chinese projects here. This is 2021 data, which are in the lower third of the cost curve. These projects are somewhere between 0.3 and 0.6% Li2O. Our sort of grade will be around 0.8% to 0.9% Li2O. So it works. And here we've got Yongxing, one of the best um, lipidolite processors in China, and their C1 costs for lithium carbonate battery grade is below $6,000 a tonne. What makes that work is the process route simple, the cost environment's low. Uh, we're going to be pursuing a sulphate roast, very simple uh, processing. Uh, it's well practiced, well understood, and so there's no new tech, no unusual tech, etc., etc. And of course, I've got to show you some fantastic rock chip grades just so I can fit in. Um, so we've got LI2O here, 44 of 64 at 1.56 up to 2.62% LI2O. So there's really some good, good fanta fantastic stuff happening at Rion Kit. And of course, we've got a substantial ESG program, um, and we believe that, uh, you know, we can't act alone. If our communities thrive, then we'll thrive. So why should you explore a better future with us? Well, one, we're the one and only battery uh, metals exploration company in Southeast Asia with licensed properties. Two, our foundation uh, project, the Rion Ket Lithium Project, has two key prospects very close to each other, very strong exploration targets and mineral resource and a lot of news coming through in the uh, next six months. And then three, our strategy is not to produce a concentrate and in parts move past lithium carbonate into cathode active material. So we're one of the few uh, listed companies in lithium which has a clear site to cathode active material. And four, the management team and the board are embedded with their investors. We have 45% of the company, so every time we make a wrong turn, it hurts us just as much as you. So we try not to do that.
So come explore a better future with us. Thank you.